Hello. Uh, so here's day one after my server build. And the hardware build went fine. Um, I've got some opinions I've formed on the Fractal Design case uh, in comparison with the NZXT H440, and I'll make another video to talk about that. Uh, overall, both good cases, but um, I think I actually kind of prefer the H440 at this point. Um, the other thing that had to change was I had picked up an EVH power Sorry, try that again. I had picked up an EVGA 500 watt power supply on sale. That I was planning on using for this build. Uh, I thought it was a fully modular power supply, but I guess uh, picking up components in an area and not really reading the box uh, turned out it was not a fully modular power supply. It was not modular in any shape, way, or form. So, uh, so it had a gazillion wires running off of it. And inside the build for the case, um, it would have been really excessive because this particular build, especially as I'm starting it out, I'm just putting a single drive in it to get us up and running. Um, the case is very clean, very empty, that whole fractal design defined S case. Uh, so you basically have a big empty cavern with a motherboard and then a power supply with like 30 wires you didn't need. So I went back and I exchanged that. Fortunately, I was able to pick it up locally. So, um, it was not really a huge deal other than, uh, my transportation cost to go and come. Um, so I ended up replacing that with a, uh, where is it? Um. Uh, a Corsair CX5, sorry, CX650M partially modular power supply, meaning that the power cable to the motherboard is attached um, and all the other cables are modular, which is perfectly fine. I really wanted to get either the RM power supply, which is what I have on my primary build. It's a, uh, it's a quiet power supply. Um, and it's fully modular. I like that one. Uh, or an AX, which is their uh, their top brand power supply from Corsair. Uh, both were really cost prohibitive, and as much as I liked them, and I'd probably use them, um, I didn't want to get too far away from my concept of building a uh, inexpensive NAS server. So anyway, so once I exchanged the power supply, I, I put the whole system together, um, booted right up, no problem. So remember, if I remember, I was talking about going to uh, one of three different ways with the software. One of which was uh, running Windows Server 2012. Um, another one was running uh, yeah, either FreeNAS or Unraid. Um, I'm still kind of leaning away from FreeNAS primarily because of how memory hungry it is. Uh, one, one gigabyte per terabyte and apparently it's uh, the way it operates with the ZFS file system is also very, uh, uh, very memory intensive. Um, so I, I, I it, so I decided to start off using Unraid. The main reason is I didn't need a second operating system for the hard drive. Um, I could just use the one the one hard drive I got in there for storage. And Unraid boots off a USB drive. And I'll probably talk a little bit about how to set that up. But there's there's a million uh, YouTube videos out there on that. But my first impressions in this um, were first, it was the easiest, by far the easiest OS I ever set up. Basically, you go to the web page, download the software, copy it to a USB key and run one batch file to make the USB key bootable. You're done. Seriously, you're done. So just plug the USB key into the drive, boot up the computer, and set USB as your boot device, and boom, you're into the OS. Um, that quick. It immediately recognized my hard drives, added my hard drive to an array, spun it up, boom, I'm sharing files. It's, it was that, that simple. I've never seen anything more simple to set up in my life. Um, so it does work. Uh, I did some speed tests on it. I was getting about 117 megabits per second read without any tuning off a single drive on a single gigabit ethernet card. So not bad at all. I'm sure I could beat it if I put an SSD in there or uh, a cache drive or something. Um, but for what I'm trying to do, a home media server, home document server, anything north of a uh, hundred megabits, that's great. I mean, I'm absolutely thrilled with it. Um, things I didn't like that came up is um, security is a little sketchy on a on RAID. Uh, it boots up and you got a root account, which is typically Unix. It's based on Slackware, right? The Slackware distribution of Unix. So it boots up, in, it runs in the root account. Uh, the root account doesn't have a password on it. There's no explicit instructions telling you to go add a password to this. Uh, I just went and did it. Uh, so I put a password on a root account. 
I then went and created a, a separate user account um, for my files, for my file shares. Uh, and by default, whenever you create a share, it's public, wide open. I'm not sure I'm very comfortable with that either. Um, but I went ahead and I created a password for my root account. And then I wanted to um, really restrict the root account usage. So I said, okay, well, let's go set up a user account to log in and do the web administration. Um, apparently, you can't do that. So if somebody can find a way to tell me, can I log in with uh, John Doe as my username and do web administration, let me know. Because right now, the only thing I can see is the only... The only account you can administer this thing with is root. So um, any experts on Unraid would love to hear it. So that, that kind of set me back a little bit. I don't really trust the security very much with the product. Um, if you're doing a home server and you're keeping it inside your network, you're probably okay so long as you have all your other uh, infrastructure uh, secured, like your, your firewall, uh, things of that nature. Um, I have a feeling that if I put this thing out on the public internet to share files, I'd be hacked in about five minutes. So positive thumbs up for setup um, on the uh, Unraid and possibly a couple thumbs down here for security. Uh, I got a bunch of notes in this. I'm just going to kind of touch on some of them. Um, so again, I'm just getting past the security thing, and I guess if I wanted to share files for, with my uh, Unraid box, one of the things I could do is use something like BitTorrent Sync, so I'm not actually allowing any inbound connections into my, into my server. Uh, the other option is, which I do anyway, uh, VPN into my home network before doing any interaction with it, so that's another option, again, as long as your VPN is secure. Um, okay, moving on. Other things I like is the file system on Unraid's a little bit untraditional, right? So, here we go. I had something to drink around here. So normally, uh, if you're going to build a NAS system or any kind of um, storage solution, people really lean towards striping your drives. And when I say striping it, it's <coughs> sort of like a, either a mirrored configuration where you have two drives or you write to one, it writes to the other. Um, fully fault tolerant. So if one drive goes out, you still got your data. And the other one, um, optionally, uh, you could go with something like RAID 5, which is you have up to five drives. You can have more, but you have up to five drives that have um, a little bit of data written on each one plus a parity drive. So in that case, any one of the five drives go out, uh, you can replace the drive and the data gets rebuilt and it works. Um, in addition, because you have multiple spindles going on these multiple drives, you potentially have a speed advantage. Now, what Unraid did is a bit different. Uh, it's designed to be a home server, so you can put a bunch of drives in there. They don't necessarily have to be the same size like you would get with a, a mirrored or a RAID 5 configuration. So I could put in a one terabyte drive in addition to a four terabyte drive, in addition to a 500 meg drive, and they'll all just work together. Now for fault tolerance, Unraid allows you to put in a, uh, an additional drive, which has to be the biggest drive in your system, or at least equal to the biggest drive in your system. That acts as your parity drive. So if any one drive fails, it could rebuild the data on that missing drive. Um, but you don't necessarily have to have it. But what Unraid does, even though you're putting in all these potentially uh, different hard drives, is it doesn't stripe the data. So in other words, if I write, let's say I got a movie file, let's say I got a cop, let's say I ripped one of my Star Trek DVDs or something, um, and I wanted to save it to my NAS, uh, it would likely write that entire movie file to one of the drives, not all of them. It's not gonna stripe across it. Um, and you can even go so far as to tell the file system on a particular share. So if I got a share called movies, I can say, yeah, you know what? It, 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 when you're saving this file, make sure the entire file is on one drive so it doesn't have to span to another drive. The thinking being, um, when you're playing it back, it doesn't have to spin up a second drive. Which brings my next point, uh, power savings. One of the things Unraid does is it spins down drives you're not using. So if you were on, let's say, free NAS or on a typical RAID configuration, even under storage spaces on Windows, if you wanted to, uh, to pull a file off, off of an array of four disks, all four of those drives are going to spin up, and they're going to stay spinning. Um, so you you got the wear and tear in the drives. You're going to have um, uh, you're going to have additional power consumption on those drives. 
So Unraid allows you to just pick up the one drive that you need. Uh, the other advantage is if you crash, let's say you have a RAID 5 setup and you crash two drives, you potentially lost all your data. You can't reconstruct it because you've only got uh, three-fifths of the data, not enough to create an image. Whereas with Unraid, uh, if any, let's say you lose two drives, your parity drive and another drive, you still got data on the rest of those drives. You can just mount and pull the data off, so you're just going to lose the ones on a drive that went bad. To me, that's really huge, especially when you're dealing with the home server. So in short, advantage is... Uh, you can use different kinds of drives. Uh, advantage is potentially easier data recovery in the event of catastrophic failure. Uh, advantage is uh, better power consumption. Disadvantage is you're potentially losing some performance you would get on reads on a multi-spindle configuration. Okay, short version of Unraid. Um, and again, I'm not a big fan of the security story with Unraid. Now let's go one step further before I wrap this up, and that's talking about applications um, and things you can run on your Unraid server. So if you run Windows, obviously there's apps you can run on that, so it can do things in addition to being a file server, such as running a database server, uh, running a media server that you can stream to. Um, FreeBSD's got a similar concept, and they go so far as to, to run their apps in things called jails, which is sort of a partitioning thing to protect data. Um, Unraid has got a similar concept, um, and they're called dockers, okay? So it's sort of like an app in a jail. Uh, there does not seem to be as many dockers as there is for, uh, for FreeBSD or Unraid, or in the case of my previous QNAP, uh, the apps that run on that. Um, that said, I can find pretty much what I need. I've got a OneDrive uh, connector on there to pull back my OneDrive files. I can't seem to get it to work with more than one user, though. So again, it goes back to one RAID seeming to be a, a setup for a home user with maybe you know one user on it. So still exploring that. Again, any Unraid experts, feel free to, to hook me up here and talk to me. There does not seem to be a connector for OneDrive, which is my preferred cloud solution, just because of my Office 365 subscription. I did find uh, a docker for something called ZoneMinder to run surveillance cameras, kind of like that. There's all sorts of torrent uh, apps out there. There's uh, your own cloud app, uh, BitTorrent Sync. So I could probably find everything I need on there. Um, that said, the ones I played with weren't quite as refined not nearly as refined as the apps I saw on my previous QNAP server. Um, so there's that. Um, lastly, you can also run VMware on it, uh, or it's a brand name. You can run virtual machines on it. So you could, in theory, run a copy of Windows on your server and pick up all the apps from there. So anyway, I've just had this thing up and running less than 12 hours at this point, just playing with it. I did set up a time machine backup, backed up my iMac, worked flawlessly, no problem there. Um, Oh, one other area I did have a problem with, uh, if I wanted to delete a share, that's not straightforward. To delete a share, you really got to go out, delete all the files in that share directory, which is also not quite as easy if you don't have permissions. Uh, and then once the directory is empty, you can go ahead and delete the share through the user interface. Um, ask me about that if you run into it. I got some strategies for that that seem to work as well. Uh, so there we are. I'm going to continue to experiment with this. Um, see if I can get everything I want on it. One of the things I'm trying to experiment with right now is setting it up as a media server. I would like to be able to stream files off my NAS to my television. And I have a gut feeling I'm gonna to have to set up a Plex server on there. Um, I haven't done that yet. Believe it or not, I've not had to set up a Plex server. I guess because I've been streaming off of either the, uh, the QNAP, which acts like a Windows media streamer, or a Windows machine. So this will be interesting. I'll let you know how that works out. Um, and I'm probably still gonna take the time to do some experimenting with free, free NAS and uh, potentially Windows before I decide which way to go with this server. So right now the server is still in my experimental state, if you will. Um, I plan on blowing it away and rebuilding it a few times. Um, but so far what I see with Unraid, other than this the horrific security story with it, um, I like it a lot. I think it could easily do what I needed to do. All right, so looking forward to some feedback with this. And, um, I'll get back to you all on uh, my findings with the, the, the cases I used for the build. Okay, just to summarize the pros and cons and my unrate impressions. Um, on the pro side, we've got the system, in my opinion, amazingly simple to set up and a fast installation. Probably one of the faster installations I've ever used on an operating system. 
Um, it had good performance. Um, didn't blow me away, but certainly beat the uh, uh, among the best of the servers I've tested, um, especially on a home network with a single Ethernet connection. Uh, it's a decent file system for home use and media storage. I really like how you can use different disks uh, working independently but collectively. So in other words, we don't have to stripe all your files. We can just put them on a disk that makes sense. I mean, it works as great as uh, Chris Tucker and Jackie Chan working together. Uh, moving on, I like how you can replace the disks at will, and this kind of goes back to the disk working independently. Um, I can upgrade a disk. I can take a 500 meg drive out and put it in a one terabyte drive, and as long as your parity disk is in place, it'll rebuild that information. But what I also liked about it is the fact that you can um, that you can recover the drives or the data from the drives uh, even if your entire array fails. So I lose two, three drives. The remaining drives are still operational. I can pull the data off. To me, that's a great recovery story. Uh, and finally, on the pro side, licensing's not that expensive. No, it's not free, but you can get a basic server up and running for at the low end. I think it's like sixty dollars. At the high end, it's like a hundred bucks. A lot cheaper than a Windows license. So let's go on and look at the cons. Okay, first on my list of negatives about Unraid, I still believe the security is uh, kind of weak on it. I don't like how at least there's no obvious way to uh, change the administrator login from root. To me, that's a huge security concern and it would be enough to prevent me from ever, ever exposing this thing to the internet. Um, I'd like a better answer. Again, comment below if you, if you have one. Um, also, the apps I've seen seem kind of limited. There's a few good ones out there, but some of them seem really kludgy, kind of thrown together. I'd like to see that. Um, I'd like to see that a little bit better. Uh, lastly, the file performance is potentially slower than traditional RAID setups. I didn't really see it in my tests yet, but I haven't really uh, uh, pushed the system very hard yet either. Um, I still think there's going to be an inherent performance gain to using a traditional setup with multi multiple spindles going at you. Um, but again, to me, the advantages here of the recovery model, um, the drives working independently, and the potential power savings for a small office network like this, uh, to me, it would outweigh a traditional RAID setup. Now, if I was building this out in an enterprise environment, I might do things a little bit different. So that's where we're at for now. Uh, as this project progresses, I'll keep you up to date. Uh, thanks for your time and listening. Take care.